quarter three, our topic is triangle congruence. The objectives are to define congruence and to illustrate triangle congruence. Let's start with congruence. Congruence has many applications in the real world because it is considered to be the most stable of all geometric figures. Triangles are used as frameworks, supports, or braces for many construction works. Triangles are strong enough to maintain their shape when acted upon by external or internal force. What is congruence? The idea of congruence is all around us. Congruence means having the same shape and size. It is denoted by this symbol. The top part of the symbol is the sign for similarity and indicates the same shape. The bottom part is the sign of equality and indicates the same size. Here are the following symbols that we can see on the following discussion. First figure is the triangle. We have the angle, the measure of an angle. This symbol is read as is congruent to and the last symbol reads as corresponds to. We have this example. We have two triangles. The triangle DOG, the triangle DOG and the triangle CAT. Remember this, that when two figures are congruent, you may slide, flip, or rotate the figures until they overlap exactly. Two triangles are congruent if all their parts are, can be made to coincide. This implies that for two triangles to be congruent, they must have the same shape, same size. Like what we have here. Triangle DOG and triangle CAT. As you see, there are markings on the sides of each triangle. We can now discuss the different corresponding parts that would be used in proving two triangles that are congruent. So let's start with corresponding vertices. We all know that a triangle has three sides. Therefore, it has three vertices. For triangle DOG, we have vertices D, O, and G. On the other hand, triangle CAT has the following vertices, C, A, T. So when you say corresponding vertices, you need to see the different markings on the two triangles. As you see, the vertex D corresponds to the vertex C based on the markings. The angle D has the opposite side, which is this side GO with a single marking, is also actually corresponds to this markings too, single marking. So therefore, the vertex D corresponds to the vertex C, as well as vertex O corresponds to the vertex A. And lastly, for the vertex G, it corresponds to the vertex T. So the corresponding vertices for the two triangles are D corresponds to C, O corresponds to A, G corresponds to T. Next, we also have corresponding angles. So, we have angle D corresponds to angle C. Angle O 
corresponds to angle A. Based on the markings, angle G corresponds to angle T. So here, these are the corresponding angles. Take note of this, that angle D has the opposite side of OG, while angle C has the opposite side of TA. Angle O has this is angle O, has the opposite side of side DG. And angle A has the opposite side of side CT. For angle G, it has the opposite side of DO. While angle T has the opposite side of CA. So this is are corresponding angles. Let's proceed to the sides. So since the corresponding angles corresponds to one another, same with the corresponding sides. So you look at the markings on the two triangles. Side DG corresponds to side CT. Side GO corresponds to side TA. And side DO corresponds to side A C A. So these are corresponding sides. Take note of the different corresponding parts. We have corresponding vertices, corresponding angles, and corresponding sides. Since the corresponding parts of triangle DOG and triangle C A T are congruent, then the two triangles are congruent. Two triangles are congruent if and only if their corresponding parts are congruent. Okay, let's do the practice. So we have two triangles here. The first triangle is triangle H. H, K, T. And the second triangle is triangle F, K, T. Let's name the corresponding parts. Let's start with the corresponding vertices. So we will be having vertex H corresponds to vertex F, vertex K corresponds to itself, and vertex T corresponds to itself. So these are the corresponding vertices. Next, corresponding angles. Let's start with angle H of the triangle HKT. So we have angle H corresponds to what angle on the second triangle? Yes, it is angle F. Then angle K corresponds to what angle? Obviously, to itself. And lastly, angle T corresponds to itself. So these are the corresponding angles. And for the last part, we have the corresponding sides. Let's start with side HK. Side HK corresponds to side F K. Next, side H T corresponds 
to side FT. And lastly, side KT corresponds to itself, side KT. So, we already did the naming of the different corresponding parts. Any questions? If there are no questions, he questions, he can now answer the written work on your learning activity sheet week 3 and it will be served as your first assignment. Write the letter of the correct answer on a piece of paper and it will be checked tomorrow. Thank you.